Let's look now then at part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we know that the area underneath the curve as a function, so area as a function of x, we could say is equal to the integral from a to x of some other function t with respect to t. So we're using t here as a, as a different variable because I've used x up here uh, in my integrand, and so not to confuse the two there. Um, but um, let's draw a graph and just kind of show what we mean here. So we'll have some, some function, some continuous function here, y equals f of t. And um, we want to find the area under the curve from a, so a is a constant, a some number, uh, and then x would be some value to the right of a. So you see x is the variable, oops, it wasn't a very straight line, x would be the variable. And so this would be the function a of x. So when we integrate this thing, um, we are finding the area under this curve f of t, and that new function will be a as a function of, of x. So what if we were asked to take the derivative of this function? Well, we know that the derivative and integrals We know that the derivative and integrals are opposite or inverse operations. And so when you take the derivative of the area under this curve from a to x, you will just end up with f of x. So the integral and the derivative would cancel each other out. So integrating f of x, little f of x, would give us capital F of x. And then the derivative of that will take us back to f of x. Let's look at some examples. But this is part two of our fundamental theorem of calculus. And let's see what happens here. Let's look at an actual example so you can see what's going on here. So it's important to understand that this must be a constant, this will be a constant, 3, some, some number, and this will be the variable. How far to the right of 3 do you want the area to be? So x. Um, uh, oops, let's actually make a function here. Let's do 3t squared. So let's look at this one. So our function is going to be 3t squared, and we are going to take the derivative of the integral from 3 to x. So let's first of all, let's first of all do this part right here, the integral from 3 to x of 3t squared with respect to t. So the integrating this, of course, is just going to be t cubed, because the derivative of t cubed is 3t squared. So integrating this, t cubed. And I am going to evaluate that from 3 to x. So this would now become x cubed minus 3 cubed. Putting x in there, then putting 3 in there. So I get x cubed take away 27. So that was this part. That was this part in the brackets here. The, the integral from 3 to x of 3t squared. We just found out was x cubed minus 27. So now the derivative of x cubed minus 27 is what? The derivative of x cubed, of course, is 3x squared, and the derivative of 27 is 0. So we're just going to get 3x squared, which is what we would get if we simply took x and substituted it in here. So instead of 3t squared, notice how it was 3x squared. 
So the derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt is just f of x, the same function, but when we have substituted the x value in for t, because the derivative of an integral, those operations effectively would cancel each other out. Let's look at another example. How about the derivative of the integral from 0 to x of e t cubed dt. Well, according to the, the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, this should just equal e to the x cubed. We'll just substitute that in there. But, again, we could prove this. We could start by taking the integral of this, and then we could substitute x in, we could substitute 0 in, we could subtract them, and then we could take the derivative, and we would find we end up with this. Another example, how about the integral from 5 to x of ln uh, t over 2 dt. Well, that should just be then ln of x over 2. Notice how this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter at all. This constant term won't matter in our actual function. It's just the x value being substituted in. So the derivative, derivative of the integral, oops, right, yes, right here, the derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt will simply equal f of x. And that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two.